Hey everyone, now listen, I'm a pretty big PlayStation fan, I've been one as long as I can remember, and some of my favorite games are famous mascots that belong to or got their start on one of the Sony consoles. So I've been pretty hyped for the rumored PS5 Pro for a while even though I didn't really see a need for one, I was just excited for something new. All of that is to say that I admit I'm biased and it takes a lot for this company to disappoint me. So when the PS5 Pro was finally officially announced this past week, I was disappointed. After they revealed everything in the short announcement video, I have to admit that there were positives, but they were far outweighed by the negatives in my opinion. Given that, I figured I'd break down everything we know about this new console and why I wish Sony would take the PS5 in a different direction. So, at its core, the PS5 Pro isn't anything new and is really just more of the same. In the video announcing the product, Mark Cerny goes over everything that we can expect from this console going forward, but there is nothing new to really show. And that kind of explained the runtime being so short and just feeling so padded out, and I suppose that is to be expected given the fact that this is a mid-generation refresh and just an upgraded product instead of a whole new console, but it was still disappointing to me nonetheless. But I'll get to that disappointment in a second, let's focus on what we're getting if you decide to pick this up for yourself. The Pro is upgrading multiple aspects of the base PS5. Starting off, the GPU has been upgraded substantially. The numbers presented by Sony say that it has 67% more compute units and 28% faster memory. According to them, this will allow games to render up to 45% faster, which, if that works, should provide a smoother gaming experience. The second thing they mentioned was advanced ray tracing. Simply put, this is an improvement compared to what the base PS5 was capable of, as well as being able to cast rays and create reflections faster and smoother. The third and most ambiguous, in my opinion, thing that was presented was PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR, or more simply put, Sony's version of AI upscaling. Basically, they say they are going to be using this to create a sharper image clarity by adding more detail to your games as you play them frame by frame. And that's basically everything that they focused on, their big three for the new pro console as they called it. There were a few other features mentioned for the console, like improved performance for PS4 and PS5 games, as well as an upgraded Wi-Fi standard, but the three key features were definitely the stars of the presentation. And they seemed great, honestly, but I had a couple problems with these features and was disappointed overall. There's also just the fact that this console isn't in anyone's hands yet, so it's hard to tell how much these improvements and these numbers will transfer to real-world gameplay. But my main issue with these three key features is that it seems to be too little while asking for too much. Nobody's going to complain about improved graphics or performance, and the numbers Sony provided seem great, but at the end of the day I care about the games, and when the side-by-side -side comparisons that they used were made, it was hard to notice a difference at all. And if these are the games they are using as an example, it would tend to reason that those are their best examples, and I don't think there is a great argument for the improvements of this console, because it seems like the change was minimal at best. There is for sure an argument to be made for how much further graphical improvements can go when it comes to selling a console. I'm sure there are still people who will buy this, but the people saying it's a waste of money seem to be grow louder every single day. And speaking of money, that brings me to probably my biggest complaint and what I think is probably most people's biggest complaint with this whole thing being the price. $700 for a console is already a hard sell, but when it's touted as a pro console you would think that it would include everything that the console has to offer, but it just doesn't. I understand that not everyone cares about physical games, but not even including a disk drive with the thing seems like an insult at the very least. Including the fact that there is no stand with this thing, and it starts to seem really weird that this pro console has so many add-ons that would have been standard a decade or even five years ago. So if you really want the pro experience with all the optional bells and whistles included, that price goes up from $700 to more like $820. And that's if you can get your hands on these add-ons, since they've been selling out ever since the announcement with them being sold out on PlayStation Direct and just hard to come by at other places. But that really is nothing new for PlayStation since they seem to attract scalpers like flies to garbage, so I won't hold it against them. So with everything that Sony has announced about the Pro and its release around the corner, where can we expect them to take the PlayStation moving forward from here? Well no matter how much people like me complain, I think it's safe to say that this console will probably sell enough for Sony to be happy with the direction they're taking with the PS5, 
and most likely with the PS6 in the coming console generation a few years from now. I say that it's safe to say it will sell enough because as of 2023, Sony accounts for about half of the market share when it comes to traditional consoles. That obviously doesn't include PC or mobile, which has exploded, but half of the traditional console market is still huge. They're able to set these ridiculous prices with no worthwhile improvement because people like me, and most likely people like you if you do play on console, are willing to pay for what they put out even when it is remarkably underwhelming and just more of the same. It's because of this that Sony will keep pushing marginal improvements to graphics while a lot of people don't seem to really care or notice at this point, especially with all the creative things being made by AA and indie studios in the past few years. It would be amazing if Sony would focus on, the a on this aspect of the gaming space a bit more and cater to some of the things people have been asking for for years at this point. I know people have been asking for themes to make a return, but they've been noticeably absent for the entirety of the PS5 life cycle. On top of that, I personally would love if Sony would expand their backwards compatibility to include generations of games older than the PS4, but that is also absent and doesn't seem to be coming anytime soon given the fact that it is more profitable to exclude these things. It allows them to devote the home screen to more ads and to push more people to buy PlayStation Plus by enticing them with the option to stream their back catalog for a relatively cheap monthly fee. I don't think things have to be this way, but it would take some real competition from Xbox or Nintendo or pushback from consumers, but I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. Who knows, maybe Nintendo will give them a run for their money with the Switch 2 that's rumored to be announced any day now. Honestly, it'll take anything at this point if it'll make them rethink their business strategy for even a moment. I guess we'll see. To wrap everything up, Sony released the PS5 Pro and it's pretty clear what I think of it. I wasn't trying to be super negative, but it's hard when this console is so near to my heart and intertwined with my childhood. I think they could be doing more, but at the end of the day, this is a mid-generation console refresh that doesn't need to exist. The improvements that are shown are so minimal that I expect only people with the best TVs and the most time to analyze frame-by-frame -frame footage will even notice a difference. On top of that, it's just honestly disingenuous to call this a pro console when it doesn't even come with everything you would need to run the game you currently own if you own any physical games on PS5 or previous generations. Not including a disk drive is a testament to Sony's efforts to push physical gaming into the past and also means if you want to play games you physically own, you're going to have to fork over an extra $80. The exclusion of a stand is just an insult on top of that. Without even getting into what I would have wished for this console, it's underwhelming with how it chooses to present what it has. I expected more, but that may have been my own fault. So I obviously have some opinions about the PS5 Pro, but I want to hear what you guys think about it too. Is it an overpriced, non-upgrade, or is it just what you've been waiting for? I know it's not for me, but I'm open to hearing why this might work for you or if you've been waiting to upgrade or jump into the Sony ecosystem. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video. It'll probably be about AstroBot. Have a great day. Bye.